So is the stock market about to pull back? What's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBud Solutions. A uh, quick little update on Tesla. Tesla hitting highs of 1,100 today. Slight resistance level, but still holding up very well. So uh, something very quickly. Um, one of the things that I've began to notice, and you guys can let me know in the comment section, is that a lot of companies, of course, were, were in earnings season, meaning that a lot of these different companies are reporting earnings. Uh, and a lot of them, especially tech related earnings uh, are in the red, right? Um, I wanted to show you a series of these different examples and how I came across them uh, and what I'm kind of seeing from them. So one of the first things that I like to do, first off, this is the Webull trading platform. If you guys want to download it, it's in the description. Uh, you guys can earn two free stocks by using the uh, link down below, but you guys go to this markets tab. And one thing that's very useful is this is the earnings calendar. Uh, visually, you know, you don't really see much going on there, but one of the things that you can do is any day that you want to see what stock is about to report earnings, you can just select on the date. So one of the routines that I have on doing a question you guys uh, have had for me in the comment section is like, how do I always know when a stock is oversold? You know, what scanner am I using? Anything like that, right? I'm not using any of that. Uh, what I'm mainly focusing on are, you know, waiting for stocks to report earnings and I look at the day after, right? Because some stocks report earnings pre-market, some stocks report earnings after market. So I just look at the day after, right? So the 28th, right? Today's the 29th. I look at the 28th and then it provides me with a list of all the stocks that reported earnings yesterday. So everything has already reacted to those earnings. So what I do is I just do it a quick little double click and then Webull actually generates this whole watch list. I don't need to look at all of them. I really just care for about five to 10 of them. Uh, but what this really allows me to do is quickly be able to break down and look through all the different stocks that reported earnings yesterday and see if it caused the stock to go up and or if it caused the stock to go down. Apple, Apple was at highs of nearly 155 yesterday, right? And it pulls on back three to 4%. It's shooting at 147 right now and trying to find a support level at the moving average. Amazon, right? 1.68 trillion market cap. Also, it drops about 4% after it misses its earnings per share. That's very, very rare for Amazon, right? So we see that sudden drop from three, four, seven, nine, all the way down to a potential support level. So it, it's good to see, right? I just wanted you to understand how it is that I find these different stocks. And what I came to find out is, you know, I was looking at this, okay, this is up 1.7%, nice. Starbucks absolutely demolished today, 7%, right? So if you guys buy the dip, make the recovery, with all those profits, you can buy a lot of pumpkin spice lattes. Uh, but also MasterCard, MasterCard with a drop that it had and then it begins to recover. Uh, but the really great thing about this is, yeah, it's great to be able to like come across stocks that are on the oversold side. But then what I began to ask myself is, you know, there are a lot of tech stocks, a lot of stocks that I'm paying attention to that are missing their earnings, right? We saw Snapchat, we saw Facebook, we saw, um, you know, Twitter, all, Pinterest, all these different stocks just absolutely drop after earnings. And then what I began to look at is, you know, all of us were waiting for the market to recover. How many of you took time to see where the market's at right now? That's all this video is about, right? Look at the NASDAQ market. So the NASDAQ market is a composite of a really big focus of, it's a NASDAQ index, right? So it has a big focus on tech. We are already at highs, meaning that not only have we recovered, but we made new highs based off of previous highs. So this is the four hour time frame. And you guys remember when the market sold off and we all prepared for it, right? So we're able to buy the dip and then ride the recovery. Remember all those videos that I was making? I'm like, this stock is so cheap. I'm buying now so I can ride the recovery, right? This stock, you know, we were, we were buying TQQQ because TQQQ was so cheap and we're able to buy the dip and then ride the recovery, right? That was about a 25% ROI that it offered. And guess what? We made new highs on TQQQ. TQQQ, for those who are not familiar with it, is a bull ETF that follows the NASDAQ market. It's triple leverage, so make sure you take that into consideration. But the reason I'm sharing this with you is what is one thing I always like to remind you when we approach overbought levels? Not that you have to do anything, right? At the end of the day, you're an adult. You are empowered to be your own person and to see value in your own way. But it is important to understand where you currently stand. Now it makes sense why certain stocks might be pulling on back. And it makes sense why if these companies continue to report negative earnings and based off of how overbought we are, 
we could pull right on back to previous lows. It doesn't mean that we're going to crash it again. I know, um, you know, people tend to freak out when the market tends to crash. But one of the things that you need to understand is that these pullbacks are great. It's where a lot of money is made, right? How amazing was it to be able to ride the recovery on a lot of the different stocks that you were invested in? That's the whole point, right? Where are all my TQQQ people, right? There's not much margin for us up here when we're already at previous highs. So yeah, we can make new highs, but how much are we going to increase before we drop right back down? And if anything, it's really nice to see a stock correct itself to some degree so you can buy it for a better deal and ride for the recovery. So all I'm sharing with you is I want you to be aware of where the current market is at right now. And not just the NASDAQ market, but you can look at the, I think it's the S Dow, which is the Dow Jones, right? So let's go ahead and look at that. So this is the S, uh, this is the inverse. So it's the U Dow, my apologies. So the U Dow is the one that's going to be the bullish right. Um, and you can see that again, that is a you know, previous highs and then SPY, which is the S&P 500, which is also uh, a really big index that's very popular, right? Uh, the S&P 500 index is at overall highs. So we got the SPY, which is S&P 500. We got the UDAO that's at new highs. And then we got the IXIC, which is the NASDAQ index that's also at previous highs. So I wanted to show you why I'm bringing this up and for you to make sense of it as however you please. If you want to continue to hold all power to you, you're an adult, right? If you want to begin to reduce your position size to prepare for a pullback, that's on you, right? And or if you want to continue to load up because you think the market's going to go higher, then great. I just want to make sure that I did my part in reminding you of where the current market is at and why based off of previous resistance levels, we can get potentially rejected. There is no confirmation of a rejection. We are simply just no longer a good deal when it comes down to these indexes, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and uh, the NASDAQ market. So I wanted to do my part sharing that with you. I wanted to show you uh, how I come across these oversold stocks and how you can make sense of it. So I hope that I earned your thumbs up. Please consider subscribing. We're almost at 1 million subscribers uh, and I'm thinking about doing a giveaway. So uh, I guess you'll just have to wait and see when it comes down to that. So uh, like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it to your team.